Have you ever mixed a song and when you listen back to it, it just doesn't sound as loud as all the other songs that are out there? What do you do then? And I feel like a lot of people think the only solution to making the track sound louder is to hit it harder with a compressor, a limiter, or a clipper. But the more you do that, the more you can suck the life out of your track and the more it's gonna start sounding distorted. And if you go too far with compression or limiting, you can actually make the song sound less powerful than without all that stuff. So what are our options when we don't want to take away all the dynamics of our song or make it sound crunchy and distorted? That is exactly what we're gonna be covering today in this video. Hey there, it's Bobby Bale from Raytown Productions. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for being here. Every single week, I drop a new video to help music creators and home studio owners make better sounding music without needing expensive gear. Today, I have another super helpful tutorial on how to make our songs sound louder without sounding more compressed. And these are tricks that anybody can do. And just a fair warning, one of the tips requires use of what's called a dynamic EQ. So if you don't have something like that, it's no reason to worry because I actually have a little gift for you. In the description, I have a link to a free PDF with my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. It covers all the different categories of plugins, including clippers, limiters, there's creative ones with distortion, chorus, phasers, reverbs, and one of my favorite free dynamic EQs. So when you finish watching this video, be sure to go and grab your copy of that PDF. I have links to all these great plugins. And one final comment before we jump into the video is that if you go through and do all three of these tricks and your song still isn't loud, it could possibly be an arrangement problem or just the way the song is written. So no matter what trick you try, it may never sound louder or as competitive as the songs that you're comparing it to. So the track that we're going to be using today is a symphonic metal song. The band is called Blind Hex, and the track we're using is called Sorrowless. Be sure to show them some love by following their socials or picking up a track if you dig it. The first trick we're going to talk about is using a saturator to help add a lot more harmonic content to the track. If you're curious what a saturator is, it just adds additional frequencies that's harmonic with the music. So it's going to basically fill in any holes that we have in our mix. A lot of saturators also have an ability to focus where you saturate the audio. So we're going to be focusing on the presence range, which is about 1K to 6K. If you go much higher than that, you can really excite the sibilance and harshness of cymbals. So we want to stay around that range. But definitely try and explore with your songs and find out what works for you. This first one is in my free PDF. This is called the Tube Saturator. So let me just show you what it sounds like. Now, it might sound kind of crazy at first, but I'll teach you how to dial this in and what to listen for to make sure you're using it right. Okay, so here we go. Okay, right? It sounds like it's just distorting everything because it basically is. So when you're using a saturator like this, we just want to be very subtle with it. We just want to add a little bit of weight to the track. Okay, so let's listen to that. As soon as we start hearing like distortions or anything like that, we want to we want to back it off. And when you're listening, you want to listen to the low frequency information because that tends to distort first. So listen to the kick drum and the snare. And when if you start hearing stuff distorting, back it off. I can already hear it in the bass, so we gotta back it off. So right, right here, I think I can just hear it. So I'm gonna pull it back to just under one. Okay, perfect. I don't hear it anymore, and it sounds like it's adding a little bit of weight and density to the song. Now we also have a few of these different regions here, which kind of helps us dial in the flavor, I guess, if you want to call it that, of the saturation. So we'll focus on the treble knob because the mid-range is going to add a little bit of mud and this track is already pretty dark and the bass is just going to add more bass. And again, we want to add proceed volume, so we have to focus in the presence region. So that's going to be probably the treble. So let's, let's push this up and see what we can do with it. I love how it really opened up the drums and the vocals now have this beautiful air, but this is a little bit too far. So right here, it's starting to feel dark again, so let's push it back. How can promises keep up? 
right there. I think this is like a perfect setting for this track. So I'm going to bypass it and re-enable it so you can hear what it's doing to the song and see how much volume it's adding. Here we go. Not too bad for a free plugin, right? All right, cool. So let's let's try another saturator. This one is more expensive, but it sounds pretty amazing. So this is Sonics Inflator. If you're interested in looking into this plugin, I have a link to it in the description. So let me just show you what this thing can do. It's pretty remarkable. So the curve basically adds harmonics and saturation. Um, it's going to get more aggressive as we push this up, and the effect is just that. It's the effect of the saturation, okay? So let's just start it at zero and then see what it does to the audio as we ride this effect up. There's like no distortion and it's gotten so much louder and more dense. The snare still stays punchy. The kick drum is still punchy. I love, love, love this plugin. So let's, let's adjust the curve and see the different styles we can dial in with this. So right here, I can start hearing, we're starting to lose the punch of the kick drum. So let's just back that off, find a good spot for it. So right around here, we have a nice punch in the drums. So I like it at this setting. And then now we're just going to dial the effect back to the point where we almost can't hear it. And then push it back up to the point where it's distorting, then we'll just fine tune it and make it perfect. Here we go. How can promises keep us this so again, I'm listening to the kick drum, the snare, because those are gonna be the elements that are gonna get hit the hardest with the saturation. So right on here is a good starting point for me, I think. So let's bypass it and see how much volume we were able to gain using this plugin. It's amazing. And it doesn't sound compressed. It doesn't sound distorted or crunchy. It just sounds more open and lively. I love this plugin. So the next trick we're going to talk about is using an EQ to clean up our low end and tighten that up so that we can push our limiter and our clippers harder at the end. So if you have a lot of bass in a track, a lot of times that is going to overwhelm our final dynamics processing like a limiter or a clipper. And it starts distorting, so it limits our ability to really crank up the volume in a clean way. So we're going to load up an EQ plugin and just try to tighten things up, get rid of these really, really subsonic frequencies that are just eating up headroom and causing distortion and not really adding anything to the music. Okay, so here I'm using FabFilter Pro Q3. You can use literally any EQ you want. I just like this one because it has a lot of different options. I also have a link to this plugin in the description if you like this. So the first thing we can do to clean up those sub frequencies is literally just put in a high pass filter. So let's just do that. We can add a high pass filter here and we'll use the display to see if there's any really subsonic rumbly frequencies that are in this track. Okay, and those types of frequencies are about maybe 28 to 35 Hertz and below. So let's take a look. So you can see right here, I mean, we have lots of energy in this really, really subsonic region. It's not helpful for the track. It's just there sucking up energy. We can't even hear it. It's just air movement at this point. So I like to start around 28 hertz and then move it up and feel if the song starts losing power, then we need to back it off. So let's do that.
So right here, we lose all the bass, guitar, and kick drum. Of course, you wouldn't do a high pass at 160 hertz, but I just want to show you, um, you know, what it sounds like if you go too far. How can promises keep us this way? But you know, like right around here, it starts to sound okay, where we're rolling off, you know, everything below 46 hertz. But the kick drum is missing some of that bloom, some of that really low earthquakey sub to it. And we want to bring a little bit of that back. So let's keep rolling it back. So right around here, I think is this is a good compromise between cleaning up the low end and still maintaining a lot of low end power. Okay, cool. Now, there's one more trick I want to show you with an EQ, and that's using uh, a shape, an EQ filter shape that not a lot of people know about or use, and it's called the tilt EQ. Let me just show you what it looks like. You literally just do a broadband tilt of all the frequencies. Sounds kind of crazy, but it's really powerful, and it just, for whatever reason, does an awesome job of tightening up the low end and adding a little bit of air to the top that really helps to give the song a lot of presence. So let me show you what this sounds like. So when you're setting this, you want to go a little crazy with it and then just kind of fine tune it. Find a spot where we're not hurting the snare and then we're going to adjust the tilt so that the kick drum still has the right amount of power. And then usually that is a good spot to leave it. So let's try it. So you really don't need to do a lot with the Tilt EQ because it's a very, very powerful move. But I feel like at 3 dB, it's it actually is helping the song still. Usually like 1 dB is enough, but for this track, we really want to tighten up that the low frequencies to give it more presence. So the only way to do that is to be a little bit more aggressive with this. So now let's bypass it and see what it does to the track. I still think this is a little bit on the aggressive side. Probably about 2 dB is all we really need because once we get to our final limiter, it's going to help bring out those highs anyways. But just to demonstrate the power of this, um, I'm being a little aggressive. Definitely check out Tilt EQs. They are awesome. All right, and the third trick that I have for you today is to use a dynamic EQ to boost the presence, but then also clamp down if things start getting a little bit too rowdy. So check this out. I'm using Waves F6 for this particular task. So it basically acts like an EQ, except it has a threshold on it that, depending on which way the range is set, can either attenuate if you exceed the threshold or boost. So in this case, we always want to boost the EQ, but then have the range set in a negative way so that if things get too loud, it'll start offsetting it and bringing those frequencies down. Okay, so the way I like to set this up is to solo the band sweep around between one and like five or six k and listen for a spot that doesn't sound harsh but it just adds a lot of clarity to the song okay so let me show you what i mean so let's play this we're gonna solo this band so like right here there's this it just feels very clear, right? So now that we have this location figured out, the frequency range that we want to boost, let's go put, you know, like a few dB of gain to it. How can so we just want to find that sweet spot where it doesn't sound harsh, it doesn't sound sizzly, but it just sounds clear. That's harsh. Right here, the vocals have this beautiful, clean sound to them. So I'm going to leave that here. And now what we can do is adjust this threshold so that if things start getting too loud, it's going to start pulling them down. The other important thing that I want to point out is let's put the attack kind of slow, like 200 milliseconds, maybe even 300 milliseconds. 
That's just going to make this dynamic EQ work less. We don't want something to react really quickly to anything because it's going to change the tone of the song too rapidly and it's going to be noticeable. And then we also want to make the release pretty fast. Okay, not like super fast, but, you know, pretty quick. All right, so let's listen to what we have. We're going to pull this threshold down and just so that this thing starts dancing a little bit. Okay, so that's too much. We just want to tap it. Okay. And something else that's a good idea is set your range so that it's between 1 and 3 dB. We don't want too much movement in this range, otherwise it's going to sound strange. See, we don't notice that now. And let's bypass this and see how much clearer, how much louder it sounds. It's these little tricks that all add up to give the song a ton of volume at the end. The reason why these tricks work so well is because of the way we hear music. Our ears are more sensitive to certain frequency ranges, so using the dynamic EQ to enhance those upper frequencies will actually make a much bigger impact to how we perceive the loudness. If you made it this far, thank you so much for your time and attention today. It would mean the world to me if you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. We have new videos coming out every single week. And then if you also hit that thumbs up, that tells YouTube that this video is helpful and it's gonna show it to more people. So that would be very much appreciated. If you wanna support this channel, you can just share this video or another one of my videos with an online community or some friends that might find it helpful. Thanks again for your time and attention today and I hope to see you in the next video.